This video continues our journey through the Kickstarter for Equal Protection. In our first step, we simply identified the types of inequality created by the law that's being challenged. Now we're going to decide what level of scrutiny to apply to that kind of inequality. In many situations, knowing which level of scrutiny to apply can be pretty easy because the answer is clearly announced by precedent. For right now, let's assume that there are only two levels of scrutiny, lower and higher. Within that framework, we have some examples from part one of the book. Under the fundamental rights prong, we know from Skinner versus Oklahoma that the right to procreate is fundamental. And even though Caroline Products did not use this modern terminology, it's clear from the case that the right to sell filled milk is not fundamental. Under the suspect classifications prong, we know from many cases, including Loving versus Virginia, that racial classifications are considered suspect. And in a case like Williamson, the classification that separates opticians from optometrists is not suspect. When there's case law directly on point, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. But let's think about the principles that would apply if we were presented with a case of first impression. This diagram helps summarize the basic rule. For right now, we can start with two levels, and these are typically known as strict scrutiny and rational basis review. As you'll remember, these terms originated with Skinner v. Oklahoma and Caroline Products, so those cases can be useful prototypes to keep in mind. The suspect classifications prong asks who is affected by the unequal distribution. In this prong, some classifications are suspect, getting strict scrutiny. Others are not suspect, and they get rational basis review. Today's law actually recognizes a third level of scrutiny known as intermediate scrutiny, but we'll come back to that later. The prototype of a suspect classification would be a law that classified on the basis of race. The idea that racial classifications deserve more careful scrutiny from courts was suggested in the dicta of footnote 4 in Caroline Products. Now, the case used different language than we use today, but the Supreme Court said that the deferential attitude, the presumption of constitutionality, might not apply in cases that involve laws that target minority groups. This type of discrimination is something that might not be resolved effectively through the political process, because the political process in this scenario is tainted with prejudice. So this is why courts should have a more vigorous role, bringing a skeptical eye to these kinds of classifications. A central and recurring question will be which classifications are considered suspect. We know from precedent that laws discriminating on the basis of race and national origin are suspect. These categories sometimes overlap, but Strouder, which discriminated against non-white people, can be a good example of a race classification. Korematsu, where there was discrimination based on which country one's ancestors immigrated from, is an example of national origin discrimination. For classifications other than race or national origin, the presumption is that they are not suspect. But in recent decades, questions have frequently arisen about whether some other kinds of classifications might also deserve more skeptical treatment by courts. When deciding that kind of question as a matter of first impression, there are a number of factors that a court might look at, and this is not an exclusive list. The details are beyond the scope of this video, but you'll be seeing them explored in a number of different cases. Back to our diagram. Let's figure out what's happening in the fundamental rights prong. Remember, the suspect classification prong looks at who is affected, and the fundamental rights prong looks at what is being distributed unequally. Here, the dividing line is between fundamental rights and non-fundamental rights. So what distinguishes fundamental rights from non-fundamental rights? That's a big question. It's been subject to a lot of debate over the years. And it's also the central topic in the line of cases dealing with substantive due process. 
because this distinction between fundamental and non-fundamental rights gets a lot more attention in substantive due process cases. I won't attempt to dive into it in this video. But as always, having a few reliable examples can be really helpful. This table will combine some of our prototype examples. Laws that involve suspect classifications will get strict scrutiny, and so will laws that unequally distribute fundamental rights. This means it's possible for a law to receive strict scrutiny for more than one reason. Strouder versus West Virginia did not use the modern terminology, but it involved the right to serve on a jury, which we would consider a fundamental right today, and it was a right restricted on the basis of race. Loving v. Virginia involved the right to marry. Part two of that opinion said that that was a fundamental right. It also involved an unequal distribution of rights on the basis of race, and part one of the opinion explained that that would get strict scrutiny. Skinner is an example of a law that involved a fundamental right, procreation, but no suspect classification. The classification in the law was that some people had been convicted of certain crimes and other people were convicted of different crimes. That's not a suspect classification. We routinely allow different punishments for different crimes. What's different about Skinner is that the punishment involved a fundamental right. So for that reason, the court demanded a really good reason for the government's decision, and it turned out there was no really good reason. We didn't see any famous cases involving a law that unequally distributed a non-fundamental right, but according to a suspect classification. But we can come up with some simple hypotheticals along those lines. For example, a law that imposed gas rationing on the basis of race, or limited the right to sell lottery tickets on the basis of national origin. Finally, cases involving ordinary business regulations will not trigger strict scrutiny. In Williamson, the right to sell prescription lenses is not a fundamental right, and placing opticians and optometrists in separate categories is not a suspect classification, so rational basis would be used. So now that we've identified the inequality and decided what level of scrutiny to use, the next step covered in the next video is to apply that scrutiny.